let's go. Uh, where everyone trade today? RKDA was kind of the main uh, stock and focus for a lot of people. Start in about five minutes. Yeah, I got rid of my beard. <laughs> It'll grow back in a week though, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> I look totally different without a beard. A lot of people say I look younger without a beard. <laughs> I'm photoshopping my beard off right now. <laughs> I actually still have it. I get a few more minutes. I'm kind of watching this RKDA after hours price action right now. <laughs> Are you old enough to trade? <laughs> Classic. Let me get some, uh, some lights going in here. I think I've showed everyone my office, but maybe I'll just do a quick walk around. Damn, what happened with the beard? I decided to get rid of it. I've had a beard for so long that, I don't know, I trimmed it and I don't know, two and three days, it's gonna probably grow back anyway, so. All right, let me kind of show you my office and then let's start. So if you walk to my office, this is kind of what you see, right? So you see my trading setup, see a sofa, see a couple paintings. Like I really, really love uh, space. So I have Benjamin Franklin in space. I have a painting of the earth. And then when I went to Area 51 before it was cool, I got this license plate. And I have this like crashed alien ship. And then I got this giant bottle of Don Julio for my birthday that I'm kind of saving for an occasion. But other than that, this is kind of what it looks like. This is where all the magic happens. That's it, just simple. As soon as I'm done trading, put on some TV, play some Xbox. Anyway, so let's get started. All right, so what I wanna talk about first is uh, this Friday is our MIC one year anniversary. So what we're doing to kind of celebrate our anniversary, we talk about it all the time, but we're having a free event in Philadelphia. Um, Saturday, August 17, our one year anniversary, we're having a free meet, which is open to everyone. You don't have to be a MIC member to come. This is kind of the information for the meetup. It's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Liberty View at Independence Visitor Center on 599 Market Street. Uh, again, you don't have to be an MIC member to come to this. Uh, come, network, meet a bunch of traders. We got food, we got drinks. Uh, should be a really, really fun time. And again, remember, trading is kind of like a loan business. You know, I don't really know much traders in the real world. So being in a room surrounded by, you know, hundreds of traders who are interested in the same topics as you, I think is really important, not only for networking, but again, this is a free event, so you really have nothing to lose if you're in the area. Um, and then what we're doing is on Monday, August 19th, 
we're having the live trading event where Bao is basically gonna be trading live in front of all of our annual and lifetime members. Uh, again, this event is also free, but it is exclusive for annual and lifetime members only. Uh, the reason why we can't kind of accommodate uh, all the monthly members is because we don't have room to fit like a thousand people. But what we're gonna do is uh, if you show up to the meetup on Saturday, we're gonna maybe have a raffle to get maybe five people uh, that are monthly members into the event on Monday for free. So again, you have really nothing to lose by showing up to this event. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And again, you know, worst case scenario, you come, you meet a couple of traders, you drink, you leave. So that's kind of the main thing that I want to talk about first. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is RKDA, right? RKDA. So let's kind of rewind to what happened with this on Friday, right? So on Friday, uh, this stock was kind of gapping up. I think it was up 50%. And we haven't had a runner, a multi-day runner in what feels like months. Seriously, what feels like months. So the first time we had a runner that wasn't giving back was kind of a signal for longs to kind of get involved in the stock, right? So whenever the market works like this, it works in cycles, right? In one cycle, the longs are gonna be in control. In one cycle, the shorts are gonna be in control. It's up to you to kind of recognize and realize uh, which side is the most stuck and take advantage of that. So on Friday, RKDA just didn't really give up, right? It didn't tank, it didn't pull back. Um, and we haven't seen something like that before. We haven't seen a stock that's gapped up 50% and not tanked, right? Because for the past month, everything is just straight up tanked. So that caught a lot of people off guard, right? That caught a lot of people off guard. Um, I traded it on Friday. I made my money. Um, I think I made around four or $5,000 in the first like 20 minutes of the open. And then I cut my trading off for the day, right? I cut myself off and I walked away. Um, what ended up happening after that is, let me actually pull up a chart. After I ended up covering, after I shorted uh, over here, I think on this first pop, I think I got 338, I top ticked it, and then I covered somewhere in the 280s. And by this point, I was all out, and I said, I made my $5,000, I'm gonna lock it up for the day. Had I not cut myself off, had I still been involved, I would have been stuck here, lost all my money here, and you know, kind of ruined my day. So the fact that I stuck to my rules and stuck to my process awarded me uh, on Friday. So after Friday, you know, I wasn't interested in trading this RKDA at all after that. I was like, this stock has trapped people. Uh, we haven't seen a runner in a really, really long time. Um, this is not something that I want to kind of mess around with. Or this is not something that I want to waste my time on. So I basically just left it alone for Friday, which was the best thing that I could have done. I didn't get trapped. I didn't get squeezed. Um, I basically made my money and walked away. So coming into today, I had a really clear mind, right? I had a really clear mind because the problem that we don't really realize is that if you lose on a stock on Friday, two things are gonna happen. Either on Monday, you're gonna be too scared to short it, or on Monday, you're gonna be shorting it too quick, too soon because you have FOMO and you feel like you wanna get your revenge on the stock and stuff like that. So I was kind of in a clear head that I didn't really care. I didn't have FOMO. I wasn't too worried about it. I wasn't really thinking about it. I basically just wanted to play price action, right? I just wanted to play price action. So coming into this morning, coming into this morning, uh, what I did is I saw on the chart that the 650 level was kind of a big area, right? The 650 level. So let me show it. So I kind of drew a line towards the 650 level. And I said, if this stock breaks above this, it's bullish. But if it kind of breaks and fails, uh, that's kind of a signal that I need to know that, hey, there's something kind of wrong here, right? So fast forward to, fast forward to the morning, right? Fast forward to the morning. I started shorting um, kind of when, as it was pushing up here, I saw that it only pushed up 20 cents. And I said, that's kind of a weak, uh, a weak push. So I'm, I'm gonna take a starter short. I took a starter short. And then as soon as this candle happened, I started to add to my winner. And this candle is a candle from 670 to 593. So almost 80 cents a share down in one minute. And when this happened, I was up a bunch of money, right? I was up a bunch of money and I said to myself, I'm not really gonna cover it. I'm gonna be patient. I wanna see how this 580 level reacts. And then if it holds 580, I'll get out. And then almost instantly, almost instantly, it went back to high the day. And I was like, there's no shot in hell that a stock that's breaking down like this 
should go back to high of the day in one candle. There's something wrong. I got to get out of here, right? I got to get the hell out of here. So I covered for a loss here, right? I covered for a loss here and just went a little bit higher before fading back and then slowly but surely kind of consolidated and went higher for the rest of the day. So after I took my loss here, right? After I took my loss, I was just done with it. And I said to myself, I'm just going to watch it. I'm just going to wait for it. I'm not going to do anything. So what happened today is, you know, I was trying to make this trade bigger than it actually was, right? So normally, if I was just kind of trading this the way I would normally, after I kind of nailed that trade, I would at least, I would at least be um, locking in a small piece of it, right? But this time I was like, screw that, you know, this is up so much, I don't have to do that. And then almost one minute later, it went all the way back to high of the day, and I was like, I gotta get out. Because imagine, if the stock is trading at $6, and it just broke $6, and it's at $5.90, and the high of the day is 670, there's no scenario in which it should be testing 670 one minute after it breaks or after it's kind of testing low of the day. That's kind of something that I never want to see. So when that happened, when that happened, I was like, I don't care what my loss is going to be. I don't care if I was just up. I got to get out because this has a shot to go to seven. It has a shot to go to eight if it kind of held that dip, right? So I got out, I took my loss and I moved on, right? And, you know, I made $5,000 on a Friday. I lost $5,000 on it today, right? So I'm, I'm kind of pissed about that. I'm really frustrated about it. Yeah, if I kind of just uh, got back in, I would have been fine. But, you know, the reality is that I stuck to my process. I stuck to my rules and I made my money. So let's kind of fast forward to the price action today, right? So 37 million shares of volume. So this is a lot of volume, right? This is a lot. Give me a sec. YTEN is ramping up. Is there news, Joe? Why is Y E T N or Y T E N touching? Anyway, so um, where was I? Oh yeah, so kind of coming into RKDA today. Here's two things that I knew, right? Two things that I knew. Uh, number one is that the borrow was not readily available. The borrow was not readily available. I woke up at seven a.m. to make sure that I got the borrow, uh, and by eight a.m. it was all gone. By 8 a.m. it was all gone. So knowing that only the people that woke up early to get the borrow was a good sign for me to short because it meant that there was going to be no amateur or no newbie type of shorting. It's only people that woke up early that were prepared for it that know what they're kind of doing, right? So that was number one. Number two is that it gapped up, right? It gapped up, which meant that, you know, at the open, there would be a flurry of people trying to cover. So in my mind, I said, okay, we have a gap up and we have not too much availability of shorts. If this thing breaks down, it's probably gonna stay down, right? So fast forwarding throughout the day is, you know, although it was still not readily available, uh, it was trading very, very crowded. It was trading very, very crowded. And what crowded means is that it felt like there was way more shorts involved in the stock than there were longs. So that kind of turned me off and that kind of freaked me out, right? That kind of freaked me out. Because if you look at the chart, um, let me pull up. There were so many times, there was something like this over here. This is at almost one o'clock. There's so many times like here where if it broke down like this, the next pop shouldn't really come back up here. It should kind of go here and then fail some more. And then it tried breaking down again and then reclaimed. And then it tried breaking down again and reclaimed and now it kind of broke through, right? So, I mean, seeing have every single opportunity to break down, yet it didn't break down was kind of a warning sign for me that, hey, there's something really sketchy going around here. And, you know, there's two possible options, right? There's two possible options. Option one is this kind of gaps up again, goes to eight and push to $10. And that's kind of gonna be like the parabolic day three short. Or option two is this is gonna gap down towards 650, bounce to seven, and then we're gonna short it bounce to seven and then kind of get an unwind, right? So, I mean, today my plan is going to be to make three plans for the stock, right? Make three plans. Game plan one, parabolic gap up. Game plan two, gap down. Or, par or game plan three, if the stock has an offering, you know, what are all the ways I'm gonna torture myself after, right? So, look, I mean, I have no idea what the stock is gonna do. All I know is that's the first multi-day runner that we've had in a couple months. So I want to kind of be aware of that and I kind of want to be uh, ready to have any plan or any mindset in place, right? So, um, this is kind of like a, uh, recognizing what's going on with RKDA is very good, right? So this is a very good thing. Number one is because we have stocks like 
R, why is it? Y R I V, A P O P, and Y T E N pushing up, right? And these are all stocks that really have no essential reason to be up, except for the fact that, you know, Y R I V is running because of sympathy to R K D A. So tomorrow, tomorrow, my plan is going to be make a very solid game, like very solid, very tight plan for what happens on Y R I V, right? So, the reason why I like YRRV better than RKDA is because it has no real news pushing the stock. They're a delinquent notice stock. They're a stock that um, needs to hold a $1 minimum bid. I uh, pushed to 140 today, washed out to $1 and then bounced to 130. You know, if this thing pushes to 150 and fails tomorrow, I'll be all over that short. Uh, APOP, if that pushes towards 80 cents or 90 cents, I'll be all over that short. While everyone else is focused on this RKDA, I'm gonna be focused on the stocks that people are forgetting about because you know today was annoying and you know I don't care if I lose one dollar or five thousand dollars the loss still sucks no matter how you slice it um, but you know what I'm proud of is the fact that I kind of stuck to my process when things didn't look right I got out so something that I talked about in the last Instagram live was that trading when you are stressed something that I've learned from dr. Brett is that you should be using stress as your signal to get out of the trade. If you are planning your trades properly, if you have the right stop, if you have the right plan, trading should not be stressful. But if you feel stressed in a trade, that means that you're in the wrong setup or something is going wrong. And in an RKDA, when it broke through $6, tested 590, and then bounced back to 670, I was stressed, that felt wrong, and I got out. Although it kind of washed out five minutes later, you know, nine times out of 10, it's not gonna wash out, so it's gonna keep going. So. Yeah, I'm frustrated, yeah, I'm fucking pissed, but the reality is that this is setting up to be an amazing, amazing short when the time comes. The time might be tomorrow, the time might be Wednesday, the time might be next Monday, who knows? Uh, all I know right now, all I know right now is that shorts from Friday are stuck, shorts from today are stuck, um, and I need to be making a plan tomorrow if we parabolic or if we gap down, because the reality is, is that uh, on Friday, it felt like an easy gap up felt like very very easy trade we haven't had a runner in a long time like longs are feeling comfortable like, it seems pretty normal but today today you know anything's possible it could gap up it could kind of gap down i don't really know i'm just gonna make a plan for it anyway so i mean i think let me kind of just look around in my setup if i have anything else to kind of talk about um do you guys have any questions for me on anything i said so far Is my new MIC tattoo? It's still, still healing. I officially bleed for MIC now. <laughs> but no beard is kind of throwing me off, really. Like I, every time I go to the bathroom to like go wash my hands or like whatever, I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? How many shares on Friday? I think I had 8,000, 9,000 shares on Friday and I made 50 cents a share on it. I covered because it went to support. Very simple. <laughs> um, people like, that's something that, why do people always overcomplicate trading, right? Why do people always overcomplicate it, right? You short at resistance, you buy at support. You buy at support, you sell at resistance, right? Um, you know, you don't have to use these fancy calculations. Why'd you cover here? Why'd you do that? Did you see this? Did you see that? If it's at support, you buy it. If it's at resistance, you sell it. You just keep doing that over and over again. Problems occur is when you buy a resistance because you have FOMO or you sell at support because you have, uh, again, FOMO, you know? Um, what advice would you give to a 15 year old? Number one is study as long as possible. Do not trade with real money until you've proven to yourself that you have an edge. And again, remember, you're fucking 15 years old, man. You got the whole world in front of you. If you're starting this trading thing now at 15, study for a year. Study for two years if you want. You're still way ahead of most people getting into this. So time is your advantage. What do you guys think of this shirt? These are the shirts that all the members are going to get in Philadelphia. Sneak peek. 
there's the Philadelphia skyline with the buying arrows and the selling arrows and the Rocky gloves. So this is what happens. When I have, whenever I lose on a trade, whenever I have a losing day, um, it sucks regardless. Like I, I don't like it. I don't care if I have a million dollars on my account and I only lose a hundred dollars. I don't care. A loss is a loss is a loss is a loss and I don't fucking like it. So anytime after I lose, I get up, I walk away, I get some fresh air, come back after five to 10 minutes, clear my head and then get back to it. Because what I've recognized is the longer that I stay in front of the screens uh, and the more emotional I am, the worse trades I'm gonna end up taking. Um, hey man, sorry if this was asked already. I just joined. You and Bao seem to recognize RKDA was in a good short today, but it looks like an A plus setup. What was different about this versus MBY last month? So what ends up the difference between this and MBY is that RKDA is the first runner that we've had in a very, very, very long time. So it is catching shorts off guard. It is catching longs off guard. Everyone wants a piece of it and volume came in, right? Volume came in. So yesterday, I mean, on Friday, it had almost 60 million shares traded. Today, it had almost 40 million shares traded. So in two days, it's almost had 100 million shares traded. And if we look at the flow, if we look at the flow, the flow is probably, I don't know, less than 5 million, right? Less than 5 million. So if you have a stock that's rotated its float a bunch of times in just two days, this is gonna be sketchy, but this is a great thing, right? This is a great thing, don't get me wrong. I'm glad I lost an RKDA because I know that when it does finally turn, I'm gonna make all my money back plus more because of the sympathy plays. YRIV, I'm gonna nail. APOP, I'm gonna nail. YTEN, I'm gonna nail. And even if I don't make all my money on RKDA, no problem, the sympathy plays are gonna make up for it. Um, You've helped me tremendously, grew my account tremendously, and prepping to work for a firm. Would love to meet you someday. Live on Staten Island. Bro, come to Philly, man. Come to Philly. It's free. It's literally free on Saturday. 11 to 2. Let me show the thing again. For all the people that came in late. Um, this is it. The Liberty View at Independence Visitor Center, 11 a.m. to 2. You do not have to be a member to come to this. I highly suggest you get to meet me, get to meet Bao, come to the raffle. Maybe if you're lucky, you get to come to the live trading event for free. Remember, people are charging thousands and thousands of dollars for their events. They're charging you thousands of dollars to meet them. We are getting you set up for a free event with free snacks. You know, don't show up, more for me. How were you able to short RKDA? The stock was not shortable. Can you please talk about the stock borrowing process? It's not shortable if you're using TD Ameritrade or E-Trade. I'm using the best broker out there, Cobra Trading. I love them. Uh, I got the borrow really early and I got it for really cheap. I paid three cents a share at seven in the morning. So the borrowers were out there. You're just using the wrong broker. Um, what else? What else? Sorry, I'm kind of like, I was gonna go for a walk, but I was like, fuck that. Like, let me go see what this stock is doing after hours. But now the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you fat piece of shit. Just go, sh I mean, go uh, take a walk. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll go walk. Screw it, let's go walk. Fuck it. Give me a sec. Let me get my shoes on. Everyone still hear me all right? All right. Thoughts on William Carman? The eyebrow guy is a fraud. Straight up paper trading fraud. I don't know why anyone listens to that guy. He's been proven to be a paper trader multiple times. All right, time to go exercise. Do you guys have any questions for me? Do 
you have a list post of all the upcoming events. The only upcoming event is this weekend at Philadelphia. There's no other events planned as of now. It's really hard to plan these events, man. It's really hard, especially the fact that we do it free. You know, we're spending, you know, five figures on this event out of our own pockets. So finding a venue and finding everything is not easy. So, I mean, again, we could throw all the fancy, um, we could throw all the fancy uh, Las Vegas stuff. We could do the big ass venues. We could do everything. But at the end of the day, you're paying for it. And that's not something we're comfortable doing right now. I mean, eventually, eventually we're not going to be able to sustain doing free events and free DVDs and all this stuff forever. So just be aware. Thoughts? Uh, I'm new to learning from MIC. Do you guys use any indicators? Uh, I use the only indicators that matter. Price, volume, and VWAP. I don't overcomplicate this stuff. I don't make it too complex. I'm not some genius. I'm just a normal guy shorting at resistance and buying at support, right? Shorting at resistance and buying at support. The problems occur is when you kind of do the inverse, right? If you buy at resistance, you're buying the breakout. That is a strategy that has a 90% chance of not working. Yet that is the one that everyone always tries to learn, right? What's the difference between easy to borrow and hard to borrow price action? If a stock is easy to borrow, it means that there's going to be more shorts involved, which means that it has less of a chance to kind of uh, go down. Whereas if a stock is hard to borrow, it means that less shorts are involved, which means that it has a higher chance to go down. So the fact that Friday the stock was pretty, it's not, it wasn't easy to borrow. It was just that locate was very easy to get. Uh, the fact that that was happening uh, meant that the stock really felt like it had a higher chance of going up. So today when it was a little bit harder to borrow, I thought it was going to go down and I'm almost certain, almost certain tomorrow it's going to be almost very hard to borrow, if not impossible. There's no, be there's no beer, it's really freaking me out. I think I'm gonna have to go like Sharpie this or something. I literally just got bored. I straight up got bored. I just got rid of it. So, why does buying breakouts not work? Because you're buying a resistance. Most of the time, you wanna be buying uh, when everyone else is selling and selling when everyone else is buying. In trading, you should always be doing the inverse of what you think is the logical thing to do. See if there's any more questions. So for those of you not in MIC right now, why are you not in there? Is it what is what is the, the thing that's holding you back, right? What is the thing that's holding you back? Let me kind of see if I could clear some things up. And for those in MIC, how do you like it? Got the neighbor's car, C63 AMG carbon fiber package. Fucking baller. Nice. Let me think if there's anything else that I want to talk about. I mean, look. Trading is not meant to be easy, right? It's not meant to be easy. But if you don't give yourself a fighting chance to actually make it, then you're doomed, right? You're doomed because, you know, all of these other people that spend literally millions of dollars a month on marketing are selling you the dream and selling you the lifestyle. But, you know, something that you have to always ask yourself is that they acquire those things from trading or from marketing. And most of the time, these people on the internet don't know anything about trading. They know really nothing about trading. So remember, always learn from a mentor, not a guru, because there's a very, very, very big difference. Who else is throwing free events? Who else is giving you free DVDs? Who else is you know giving you daily moderator phone calls? Who else is giving you two webinars a week? Who else is updating the videos every single day? Anyway. Alex, are you looking to buy a new car at all? And if you are, what are you looking at? Yeah, eventually, eventually. I mean, I don't know. I, 
the last thing on my mind right now is getting a new car, right? I'm like too focused on the event. I'm too focused on MIC. Literally just got a tattoo of it. <laughs> so, I mean, the last thing I'm thinking about is a car. I just moved out and stuff like that. But eventually, eventually, you know, maybe when I'm bored one day, I'll go do something, but that's it. Where is that? This is my town. Uh, this is where I kind of moved to. It's a beautiful spot. I don't want to kind of give information in case the trolls show up, so. Do you notice that another blah blah is doing these live videos? Of course they are. Everyone's in MIC learning. No one spoke about process. No one spoke about stops. No one spoke about discipline. Now they all preach it like they've been saying it for years. That's what happens when a uh, real trader starts something. Yeah, the beard is gone, man. The beard is gone. I'm a new man. I'm a new man. <laughs> Shit. It looks bad, right? I know. You could. You don't have to lie to me. You don't have to lie to me. It looks like shit. I just, I don't know. I don't like, I was just so sick of having a beard. I've had a beard for like forever. And my Middle Eastern jeans just have it growing back. You'll see in Philly, in Philly, I'll have a full beard. It takes literally two days to grow back, right? It takes two freaking days. Sam knows about it. <laughs> you look your age now. Yeah, people have, every time I tell people I'm 24, like no way that guy's 24, he's 30. He's 30, what a scammer. Guy is lying about his age. That's what I look like, baby face. And I didn't even shave all of it off, I just trimmed it, I left some stubble too. If I completely shave it off, I look ridiculous. They probably wouldn't even let me drink a margarita at the bar. <laughs> Oliver's been growing his beard for 38 years. <laughs> Middle Eastern, I'm Armenian. I'm Armenian. So I speak English, Armenian, Turkish. I took some Chinese in high school. Um, I've been trading for five, five or six years now. Five or six years. Can't believe it. Um, I hope to be trading for 10 years and then 20 years like Bao, but you know, trading is always, trading is a passion, right? It's the same reason why Bao does it, right? So Bao doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to trade for money. If the guy never made another dollar for the rest of his life again, he would have enough money for him, his son, and his son's son to be taken care of. But the reason why he trades is because he loves it. It's a passion for him. It is the only thing that truly, I think, brings him happiness in this world. So I think because of that is why he's always going to be loving to trade. He's always going to have a passion for it. He was telling me the other day that, you know, he has contingency plans in case his arms break or his feet. I mean, his arms break or he loses feeling in his arms. He's going to be trading with his feet. He already has a way to like get a mouse with like his foot or something like that. So that's what Bao thinks about at night. You know, what's going to happen if his arms stop working? Um, <laughs> How much money did I start with? You can watch my chat with traders interview, episode 104. Uh, it explains all this stuff. Or my SMB Capital video. You can just write Alex Temis SMB Capital on YouTube. What do you do with so much spare time? Bro, I don't have any spare time. I don't have any spare time. I wake up at six in the morning. I'm in front of the computer or, <coughs> or next to a computer until like four. And if I'm not trading until then, I'm helping out MIC members. You guys forget, I get 75 to 100 PMs a day. Uh, and then I have stuff like, uh, I wanna make sure that all the members are being taken care of. I'm working on some backend stuff for MIC, like the YouTube videos, or like the video library. So I have literally no free time at all, ever, 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 ever. The only free time I have is on the weekends and I use that to straight up sleep. Do buying breakouts really not work? I mean, ask any successful long trader. They don't really buy the breakout. They buy the dips. They buy the support. Do you have any advice for trading on the West Coast? I mean, I think trading on the West Coast is amazing. I mean, I 
I think it's fucking awesome, especially if you have two jobs, like you trade part-time and you have a full-time job. Imagine the market opens up at 6.30 in the morning, West Coast time, right? So if you're done trading by 8.30 in the morning, you could still have time to go to your job at 9.30 till four o'clock, you know? That's a big advantage. What's RKDA, RKDA at right now? What broker should we use if we can't afford Cobra? Go to Venom, it's their uh, sister company. They accept accounts, I think, for $5,000. I think that's it, guys. I think I'm gonna wrap this up, kind of keep it short and sweet. But if you have any other questions, let's kind of run through it right now really quickly while I'm walking back. How's the arm workout holding the phone? Not too bad, I just want this tattoo to heal. Uh, the event details are that it's Saturday, August 17 at the Liberty View uh, in Philadelphia from 11 to two. It is 100% free to come. Uh, you don't have to be a member to come. You only have to be a member to come to the live trading event on Monday, which is also free. Check out this G10. I've lived here for almost a month now, and that GTR has not moved an inch. Has not moved an inch. I would not take a long position on day three of RKDA. Definitely not. You know, it has a chance to go higher, but risk reward is not there for me. I wouldn't be surprised to see an offering tomorrow morning either. But anyway, that's it. I'm um, going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you for joining. And then I will see you hopefully when I have a beard again <laughs> later.